to be here. For several years now, we've been bringing you the results of a special kind of crash test. It's called an offset test, and as you've seen before, some vehicles do better than others. Tonight, take two. After being redesigned, some of the cars and minivans that didn't do so well the first time around are getting a second chance. And some that did just fine are being put to the test again. Will they do as well as they did the first time? Here's Chief Consumer Correspondent Lee Thompson with a Dateline Consumer Alert. Two, one. It's a test of engineering know-how. Could a vehicle that flunked a crash test... This is just looking terrible. ...be redesigned so it's much safer and not much more expensive? Structurally, it's looking very good. That was the same challenge facing the designers of 10 cars and minivans, including big sellers like the Ford Windstar, Dodge Neon, and Volkswagen Jetta. And as you're about to see, while some models improved, others did worse the second time around. We'll show you everything from broken parts... The steering wheel has separated from the column. ...to an unexpected discovery... It's actually on fire here. ...that led to the recall of thousands of cars. Car companies are competing in the safety marketplace, and they're using the results of our crash tests, the results of government crash tests, to promote their products. Let's see what the dummy numbers are. Brian O'Neill and his team of researchers at the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety conduct the crash test the government doesn't do. The government tests cars head-on into a flat wall at 35 miles per hour. The force spread evenly across the front. But the Institute crashes cars at 40 miles per hour. O'Neill says it more closely resembles many serious real-world accidents, where cars end up hitting like this, driver to driver, off-center. The test cars are bought right off dealers' lots. Dateline has no say on how they're chosen, tested, or evaluated. Good performance can be accomplished without significant expense on the part of the manufacturer. It just has to be a design priority. Funded by large insurance companies, the Institute's priority is to cut insurance claims through the building of safer vehicles. All of the vehicles meet or exceed government safety standards, and many of the cars you'll see tonight are being retested because the automakers themselves wanted to know how their new models would fare in the Institute's test. They've made some engineering changes and improvements that they think will make it the vehicle do better. You're about to see if those changes worked. Let's take a look first at the minivans. The biggest difference between the old and new models is this fourth door. The Insurance Institute wanted to find out if by adding it, it in any way compromised the safety of the passengers inside. The first minivan we'll show you is the Honda Odyssey. When the old Honda Odyssey was tested, dummy readings showed a broken leg. The Institute gave the Odyssey its second lowest rating, marginal. This is the 1999 Odyssey with a brand new design. First impressions are that this looks very good because you see there's very little deformation or buckling here or down here. Which the new Odyssey performs much better than the old one. Legs look good. Both legs? Both legs. There's nothing wrong with this dummy. Take another look using the Institute's slow motion films. It's an all new design and it turns out to be a good performer. You see how little uh, structural damage there is here. Is the Honda Odyssey a safer minivan than it used to be? There is absolutely no question that the new Honda Odyssey is much safer than its predecessor model. So the new Honda Odyssey gets the Institute's yeah. highest rating, good. Next, the Ford Windstar. The old Windstar was one of the best minivans ever tested by the Institute. Here's the 99 Windstar. We've got a little buckling here. The wheel has gone inboard somewhat. Some buckling of the roof here. It's not major. No serious injuries, so the Ford Windstar keeps its good rating. But the next minivan in the test was about to take a turn for the worse. The old Nissan Quest got only a marginal rating. Dummy readings in that crash showed two broken legs. This is the new Quest. 
it's looking very bad. The area around the driver's feet has been pushed back almost 16 inches. O'Neill calls it intrusion. We've seen collapse and failure of the structure here. As a result, we've got intrusion back into the compartment. So why does the new Quest perform even worse than the old one? Clearly, something about this door has weakened this structure, which is contributing to this collapse. Broken legs? Broken legs, but look in there. You're not just going to have potentially a broken leg. You could finish up with major fractures, multiple fractures, because your feet and legs can easily get trapped in there. The Institute gives the 99 Nissan Quest its lowest rating, poor. Now compare the Quest on the left with the Honda Odyssey, a good performer on the right. A fourth door doesn't have to result in deteriorating performance in this test. Now the mid-size cars. The old Mitsubishi Galant was rated poor by the Institute. But the new Galant does much better. They've strengthened the occupant compartment so that you see this retains its shape reasonably well. Compare the old Galant on the top with the new one on the bottom. Dummy readings show only a possible leg injury in the new version. A success story. A big success story. A much safer vehicle. The Mitsubishi Galant just misses out on the Institute's highest rating. It gets an acceptable. Two other mid-sized cars, the Saab 93 and the Hyundai Sonata also improve over their earlier models. The Institute rates both of those cars acceptable. The final group is the small cars. The old Mazda protege was rated acceptable by the Institute. As for the 99 protege, much the same result. Dummy readings show a broken leg, which keeps the protege from getting the highest rating. It gets an acceptable. The old Dodge Neon received a poor rating from the Institute. The safety cage has not performed very well. So did the brand new Neon improve? This door is uh, folded away, so that that means that the dummy can move in this direction in the crash. Dummy reading show sure. a broken leg. O'Neill says there's only slight improvement over the old Neon. You see that the structure doesn't hold up well. We get collapse and failure of the compartment up here. And there's another problem. Although it didn't cause any injuries, the steering wheel has snapped right off during the crash. And what's the danger? Well, it's hard to say, but obviously if this wheel somehow gets out of the way and you're in a subsequent impact, then we have something here that's particularly hazardous. With only a slightly better performance than the old Neon, the Institute gives the new Dodge Neon its second lowest rating, marginal. The Kia Sophia, the old version, was the worst performing small car ever tested by the Institute, with multiple leg injuries. So does the 99 Sophia do any better? From the outside, it looks a lot better than the predecessor. Although the structural performance improved, dummy readings still show possible leg injuries. And this time, there's a new concern, the head. It has bounced around between the airbag and the door frame, known as the B-pillar. So it got high forces on the head going into the airbag and high forces when it came back and hit the B-pillar. So that became a poor head injury rating under our system. And because the Institute puts so much weight on potential head injury scores, the Kia's overall rating is still poor. Finally, the Volkswagen Jetta, also known as the Golf, a marginal performer the first time around. Now the 99 Jetta. Even with more than 90 crash tests behind them, the Institute's engineers have never seen anything quite like this before. Hey, it's actually, it's flaming. Hey, uh, it's actually on fire here. Get a fire extinguisher. You got a problem, guys. You got a fire. The crash triggered a fire just inside the driver's side door. It didn't take long to find the cause of the flame. This belt system has a, what is called a crash tensioner. 
A belt tensioner is a device which activates within milliseconds of a crash to eliminate slack in the seat belt, holding passengers tighter to their seats. A mini explosion inside the device generates gas. Gas drives this device around which tightens the reel and the webbing. And this, holds you in. And holds you tighter. This gas is hot. So hot that Volkswagen discovered the tensioner had ignited soundproofing material inside the car. You can see where the flame reached all the way up here. That's not very far from somebody's head. That's correct. The, the actual flame was up at this point here. You see the melting of the material. Volkswagen engineers quickly determined that improper installation of that soundproofing material could lead to other fires. Although there have been no reported incidents of fires like this one, Volkswagen recalled almost 13,000 new Jettas and Golfs in the U.S. and Canada to remove that material. If you do not take your Volkswagen Jetta in, are you taking some risk with your family? Every time there's a safety recall and if you ignore it, you're taking some risks. So besides the fire, how did the Jetta perform in the offset test? The structural performance of the 1999 Jetta is a big improvement over its predecessor. They have strengthened the occupant compartment and done a better job of confining the damage to the front end of the vehicle. Because Volkswagen was quick to fix the fire problem and there were no serious injuries to the dummy in this crash, the Institute rates the Jetta acceptable. So overall, how did all the cars and minivans rate in the end? The Honda Odyssey and Ford Windstar received the Institute's highest rating, good. The Mitsubishi Galant, Saab 9.3, Hyundai Sonata, Volkswagen Jetta, and Mazda Protégé were rated acceptable. The Dodge Neon, marginal. And the Nissan Quest and Kia Sophia were rated poor. All the auto manufacturers we contacted told us their cars meet or exceed federal standards, that they are committed to improving passenger safety, and that it's difficult for one test to accurately reflect real-world conditions. Specifically, Saab, Daimler, Chrysler, Hyundai, and Mitsubishi also point out that areas of the body critical to life, the head, neck, and chest, were well protected in their vehicles. And Nissan says the Quest is one of the safest minivans in the U.S., with fewer than average serious and fatal injuries recorded from real-world accidents. Only one manufacturer, Saab, maker of the acceptable rated 9.3, would talk to us on camera. Our new products uh, are designed around this test. Saab engineer Gerald Plant says his company designs cars specifically with the offset test in mind, adding reinforcements which allow the car to absorb energy in a crash instead of the passengers. The front structure has in fact uh, compressed itself to about half the length that it was originally and in doing so has absorbed a lot of the impact energy. O'Neill says the auto industry's dedication to improving offset crash performance is paying off with safer cars. He just wishes all companies had the same level of commitment. We still have too many vehicles that don't perform well. We're hoping to get to the point where they will all perform as well as the best vehicles. Then we can declare victory and move on. As for that broken steering wheel in the Dodge Neon, Daimler Chrysler says it's still investigating why it happened and says it found no other similar cases. Volkswagen told us that since that potential fire hazard was discovered, about half of the owners of affected Jettas and Golfs have brought their cars to be fixed. For more information on all the Insurance Institute's crash tests, as well as the government's tests, visit our website at www.dateline.msnbc.com. Coming up next, 